Since by law, many ATSC 3.0 channels need to coexist with ATSC 1.0 for a set amount of time, both ATSC 1.0 and ATSC 3.0 have to fit in what's left of the scarce public TV airwaves, previously only made up of ATSC 1.0 stations. This creates a problem. How does a broadcaster keep ATSC 1.0 broadcasts on the air while broadcasting in ATSC 3.0? When WUHF switched to ATSC 3.0 in March of 2023, here's what happened. Using Sinclair's WUHF, Rochester will have ATSC 3.0 versions of its CBS, ABC, PBS, and Fox affiliates. In order to make this happen, channels that are currently on WUHF's existing ATSC 1.0 signal will be added to various stations broadcasting on Pinnacle Hill. WUHF's Fox Rochester will become a subchannel of Nexstar's WROC. Antenna TV and Comet TV will become subchannels of Sinclair's WHAM. And TBD will become a subchannel of WXXI's WXXI. Essentially, for having a broadcaster's channel on the ATSC 3.0 signal, the agreement is the respective broadcaster will add a former WUHF subchannel to their station. This way, WUHF's programming stays on the air in ATSC 1.0. And in return, those other broadcasters get their main channel on an ATSC 3.0 signal in addition to their own ATSC 1.0 signals. These channels magically fit on other stations with lossy compression. If you didn't already know, ATSC 1.0 primarily uses H.262 or MPEG-2 Part 2 for video, which is an incredibly inefficient codec that came out in 1996. Compound this with the fact that ATSC 1.0 can only fit 19.39 megabits per second, and the video capability abilities are incredibly limited while using MPEG-2 video. When WTVJ transitioned to ATSC 3.0 in January of 2023, its main HD channel, NBC, got displaced onto NBC Universal's other station in Miami, WSCV. WSCV now has two 1080i channels and four 480i channels. Since switching to WSCV, NBC has an average bitrate of 6 megabits per second, with it dipping as low as 3 megabits per second. To give you an idea, DVDs have 480p MPEG-2 video at 9 megabits per second. The good thing is, ATSC 1.0 isn't locked to just sending MPEG-2 video. At the end of the day, ATSC 1.0 is just sending ones and zeros. These ones and zeros can be made up of literally any video codec. K03IMD, an ATSC 1.0 station in Eugene, Oregon, is sending three 4K HEVC channels, one 1080p AVC channel, one MPEG-2 480p channel, and one MPEG-2 1080p channel. Again, this is an ATSC 1.0 station that's sending three 4K channels using HEVC, not ATSC 3.0. I give this broadcaster a lot of credit for broadcasting video that is not officially part of the ATSC 1.0 standard. But there's an even better codec than HEVC. Versatile video coding, aka VVC or H.266, is the most efficient video compression codec in the world and can send great looking 1080p HD video over ATSC 1.0 at just around 2.5 megabits per second. The equivalent quality with MPEG-2 video is 19 megabits per second. With VVC, a broadcaster could fit nearly 7 more channels of that same wonderful quality in the same 6 megahertz ATSC 1.0 RF channel. VVC is so efficient that you could easily fit a two hour long 4K HDR movie on a DVD. More on VVC in a future video coming soon. But there's a catch. The broadcaster needs equipment to send the codec, and the consumer on the receiving end needs equipment to decode the codec. 
MPEG-2 video has always been a part of the ATSC 1.0 standard since 1996, and AVC video was added to the standard later on. This means most relatively modern ATSC 1.0 devices will support MPEG-2 and AVC, but many legacy ATSC 1.0 devices may only support MPEG-2. Devices like the HD Home Run are the most future-proof because they don't decode any video or audio. HD Home Run simply tune the ATSC 1.0 or ATSC 3.0 waveform and extract binary code from it. It then sends the code to a client device so it's up to the client or client app to be able to decode a given codec. That's why in VLC, Dolby AC4 audio won't play from ATSC 3.0 stations, but other apps like Channels for HD Home Run will. Not only would I be able to watch the HEVC video from K03IMD using an HD Home Run, I'd be able to watch video from any modern codec like AV1 or H.266 as long as my client app supports it. If it does doesn't, it's as simple as the app developer pushing out a software update to include it. Some broadcasters are starting to send out video using AVC on ATSC 1.0, but it's usually just a single 480i subchannel, in a list of many other channels that are MPEG-2. This is done out of fear that many won't be able to pick up channels broadcast using AVC. ATSC 1.0 channels with AVC play back perfectly fine on my $150 on 4K Roku TV, and also play back perfectly fine on cheap ATSC 1.0 converter boxes under $30. In fact, I couldn't find a single ATSC 1.0 device that I own that couldn't decode AVC video. If all ATSC 1.0 MPEG-2 broadcasts switched to using AVC, overnight, the video quality would double. And right now, many ATSC 1.0 channels are in desperate need of that quality boost. In my opinion, broadcasters should be using AVC way more in their ATSC 1.0 broadcasts. AVC is officially part of the ATSC 1.0 standard, and most consumer devices should be able to support it. MPEG-2 is ancient trash that when coupled with low bit rates, produces incredibly poor quality video. If you like this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. Follow Western New York Over the Air on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at WNY Over the Air. Like Western New York Over the Air on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. Support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. And check out WNYOverTheAir.com for live band scans, cord cutting tips, and much more.